Good afternoon to everybody. I'm Roberto Giolito. I'm head of Fiat and Chrysler EMEA Design. With me, some friends that uh, we have participated to this vision, long side vision on the future of mobility. Adriana Uccelli from Color and Material Department of Fiat Design, and Avetic Kalashan from Fiat Design Department, and Lorenzo Piano from Fiat Design Department. We will help you to understand the contest and the related activities on. Now we kindly ask you to watch this with us this video and afterwards we will see again to start a question and answer session. So enjoy the vision and see you in uh, eight minutes at circle. Vi illustreremo attraverso una, un percorso, attraverso un'esplorazione dei punti fondamentali scaturiti dalla nostra creatività, dalla nostra esperienza, come immaginare un salto deciso nel futuro per i mezzi di trasporto, i concetti di mobilità e ciò che governerà il nostro modo di muoverci e di utilizzare le automobili. Nell'industria dell'automobile esiste una propensione all'invenzione, al superare gli ostacoli, a creare architetture in movimento. La Topolino del 36 fu la, la più piccola, la più versatile, una vettura che guadagnò una reputazione di barzelletta viaggiante, eppure diede vita a una vera stirpe di veicoli altrettanto innovativi. La 600 Multipla, la prima rocket car eh, della storia, almeno per quanto riguarda una vettura in commercio che esprimesse il valore della vera monovolume. Insomma, l'invenzione che si esplicita sul prodotto automobilistico attraverso i designers, attraverso le loro capacità, le loro attitudini e soprattutto l'azienda tutta quanta che mette insieme le esperienze più importanti per poter andare avanti e soprattutto eh, generare idee. Tre capisaldi per una new mobility. Il comfort come esperienza che si ricava dal viaggio, dall'utilizzo di un veicolo o di un sistema di veicoli, si trasforma in well-being, un'esperienza ancora più assicurata dalla qualità del prodotto e del servizio. Normalmente il comfort veniva associato con i sedili, con gli interni, con i materiali, in una maniera molto semplice. In realtà per noi well-being significa star bene, star bene con la vettura in tutti i suoi aspetti, non soltanto quelli puramente fisici. I materiali ed i colori sono il frutto dell'esperienza di un viaggio, un racconto che attraversa e viene stimolato da suggestioni e devono essere raccolti in un piccolo spazio. Partendo da questi stimoli li analizziamo e li rielaboriamo sui progetti del futuro. Un materiale svolge la sua funzione all'interno di questo contesto proprio seguendo questi gesti che possono essere naturali e non essere solo anonimo, può essere praticamente un materiale che dichiara la sua funzione, non viene mascherato da elementi che possono essere solamente decorativi. L'altro caposaldo della New Mobility è la sicurezza. La sicurezza si trasforma in easiness, in facilità assoluta, in approccio intuitivo. Parliamo di easiness, del concetto di semplicità e di facilità di utilizzo. Avere un compagno di viaggio significa conoscere bene con chi si sta viaggiando e come si sta viaggiando. Questo ci è permesso anche attraverso i materiali. In che modo? Partendo direttamente dal sedile, il materiale che è più adiacente al nostro corpo, quindi attraverso materiali che sono di per sé già strutturali e anche semplici all'utilizzo come al lavaggio, alla pulitura. Noi abbiamo immaginato l'utilizzo dell'auto nei vari momenti della giornata il mattino, ad esempio, il pomeriggio, la sera, e con varie persone a bordo, il passeggero, il guidatore e anche la sua famiglia, ad esempio, o i suoi amici. Semplicità significa anche avere delle interfacce semplici. Siamo abituati ogni giorno a vivere con dispositivi quali cellulari, fotocamere. La possibilità di avere la stessa interfaccia fuori, ma anche dentro l'automobile, la, ci può essere di aiuto. In Fiat facciamo ogni tanto delle escursioni fuori pista, 
con degli esercizi che sono mirati a esplorare gli scenari di sviluppo del prodotto e l'impatto che le nuove tecnologie possono avere su di esso. Infatti qua vediamo uno degli esercizi dove si vede come la plancia porta strumenti viene rivoluzionata dalle nuove tecnologie più compatte che riducono il carico cognitivo sul guidatore, ridimensionando molto quello che una volta era il cluster strumento con tutti i comandi di guida e portando tutto a una dimensione molto più fruibile e quotidiana. Come il gesto consegue la parola, così un veicolo si deve prefigurare, conformare per essere soprattutto sicuro e non indurre errori. L'auto diventa sempre più cosciente dell'ambiente circostante, dei pedoni e degli altri veicoli che la circondano, fino a un giorno quando sarà perfettamente in grado di evitare qualsiasi collisione. Quel giorno scopriremo un sacco di spazio in più all'interno dell'automobile, potremo avere una postura più rilassata e occuparci di quello che ci piace fare oltre alla guida. styling e il design dell'automobile stanno incontrando nuove esigenze, quello di progettare le cangianze, il cambiamento dell'auto che non è più quello di ordinarla di un certo colore, di averla con un certo tipo di allestimento, ma il fatto che il progetto stesso tolleri e suggerisca di essere cambiato in una quantità infinita di versioni. Quindi si passa dallo style al mood, allo stato d'animo, alla situazione transitoria in cui un prodotto automobilistico può dimostrarsi verso l'utenza. Il lifestyle oggi è diventato sempre più parte integrante all'interno della vettura. L'auto deve poter esprimere i nostri stati d'animo e rispondere a un'esigenza sempre più forte del distinguersi e del poter essere individuale. Sino ad oggi gli oggetti o accessori all'interno della vettura sono sempre stati definiti oggetti statici, non erano pensati in funzione un po' di quella che è la vita di chi li possiede, ma semplicemente collocati all'interno di specifici spazi. Oggi questi stessi oggetti sono pensati per essere introdotti nell'automobile e accompagnarci dentro e fuori ad essa. Una forte attenzione è dedicata al mondo del colore, eh, con una forte ricerca delle nuove tendenze, il fluo, il neon, colori che danno ottimismo. Se prima la vernice era solamente un elemento di scelta, di abbinamento, adesso nel futuro potrebbe essere vista come un elemento di dialogo verso l'esterno, un elemento interattivo. Il concetto degli multi-purpose veicolo è il concetto che guiderà l'equazione tra spazio occupato a terra e fruibilità dell'abitacolo. Un abitacolo dove in futuro non sarà più necessario essere appesi a un volante o dover tutti guardare davanti, ma comincerà a essere quel prolungamento dello spazio di vita, di esperienza di viaggio e di socialità che continuerà in maniera seamless, senza fratture tra ciò che si faceva fuori del veicolo e quello che si continuerà a fare dentro il veicolo. Fino ad ora vi abbiamo dato alcune idee su come il design può influenzare l'accesso nella mobilità del futuro. Design, futuro, accessibilità, come pensate che questi elementi si possano fondere insieme nelle soluzioni di mobilità del futuro? Ognuno di voi può inviare un file PDF contenente disegni, testo, immagini o qualsiasi altra forma di espressione rappresenti la propria visione dei materiali. Il concorso finirà il 23 novembre. I migliori vinceranno un viaggio a Torino per trascorrere una mezza giornata nel centro stile Fiat con me e con i top designers che lavorano con me per poi terminare la giornata con una visita al Museo dell'Automobile. Visitate il sito Our Future Mobility Now per avere ulteriori informazioni. E ora iniziate a spedirci le vostre idee e grazie a tutti. Let's start the, an open discussion on the uh, future mobility in terms of uh, approaching the design of the future of the cars. And we said also there are no uh, main uh, constraints in terms of anticipating the new trends, especially what is called the personality of the cars, the relation with the, uh, the pollution and the environment. Uh, Everyone? Safe for uh, yeah, cars. Probably, uh, some problem with the 
I know that you already uh, some questions to ask, so it's good to have a discussion direct with you. We have some sounds here that we can eliminate just to don't have all. And um, so if you have some uh, some questions on uh, on the on the topic, one of these is uh, which are the most important elements when you project a new model of a car. Uh, probably you already uh, heard about the constraints and the product briefing of a new model. This is not only a, a collection of information about the target, about uh, the perimeter of the of the market, but it's more concerning the technology behind any creation of a car. What is really the content of the new technology expressed by a new model? For this reason, we are approaching a research of new materials. Especially, we are concentrating on the typology and the segment of the car, and uh, it's a it's a great difference from a utility car, from for instance an A segment like our Fiat Panda, or uh, at least uh, um, uh, the same segment transposed on an emotional car like the Fiat 500. But when we look at the future, what we consider, uh, f of course, a new technological aspect, how the driver and the passenger will be involved into the experience, how the product will create a new step in terms of uh, referral, in terms of uh, reference on the market. I will ask you to Avetic, especially on this uh, related to the uh, human and user experience, what this could be. Um, yes, um, here in Fiat we usually consider our users to be uh, at the center of the project. So every time we start a new project, we, we uh, consider our final user and his habits, his preferences. So um, uh, when he gets inside the, our, a car, he feels at home because uh, he can continue with his um, activities. We can find the objects and technologies and the way he interacts uh, with his devices at home or elsewhere. So it's a kind of integration of the car, and a seamless integration of the car with the, the rest of your uh, life. So this and, is and the approach to the new materials is, of course, uh, such an inspiration for uh, that's a start from uh, material designers to the product designers that are giving the shape to these uh, new features. And uh, a, new, a new question from you is, uh, what are the most innovative materials that might become an essential for future cars? And beside me, there's Adriana that is a real an expert for uh, material creation and designing the new essence for the new products. Adriana, which one would be very, very essential for giving new shape to the cars? When we talk about the new material in the car, we talk about a small space. Uh, a, a lot of, uh, of components and materials uh, live uh, together. When uh, we talk about uh, the uh, innovative material, we can um, we could have uh, uh, inspiration uh, from uh, another world, another technology, and we can put it inside. Um, when uh, we talk uh, about uh, an old car. We always uh, saw uh, the different component uh, and the different component is, uh, um, have a different characteristic, uh, material characteristic. The innovative uh, approach could be harmonize the, the, the logic of an interior car or an exterior car. Uh, it could, uh, it could uh, tell a story, to talk about uh, themselves and uh, show not, uh, not uh, an, imi an imitation, uh, but uh, um, what... Uh, the is, real consistency yeah. of, uh, of the assets. Great. And when we consider the exterior, so we consider transparencies and matte surfaces that are split by the famous belt line that is split in the greenhouse and the lower part of the body. But uh, when we move uh, to the interior, we will see that there are so many opportunities that new materials will bring in our hands like uh, interaction, change of color, change of softness. So I will ask you to Lorenzo Piano that is involved in the design of the new 500s, new Panda, how this could be something related to the user in terms of uh, personality, in terms of uh, personalization, of course, and, uh, and form and function. Well, when, when we think about the new interior, for example, when we, when we designed uh, Panda, 
we thought about uh, uh, all the functions that were uh, present in, uh, in the interior of the car and all the user needs. Uh, in fact, user needs are not just uh, a matter of uh, comfort or where um, storage of objects or something else. It's the quality. It, uh, it matters the quality of the time you spend in the car. Um, for Panda, for example, we made a lot of uh, attention for the driver, but also for the passenger, because it's, uh, it's considered a small utility car, so not just for the driver. And go beyond the needs means also um, try to, to figure out if you cannot uh, uh, pass a good time in your car, you will hate your car. So your car has to be in some way like your home. And uh, in fact, all the instrument and uh, the cluster, radio, and all yeah. that function has, uh, were designed, were thinked uh, with this principle in mind. You have to be in an easy environment, something that has to be really, really easy for you and your passenger, your family, or your friends. Another question is uh, especially dedicated to the, to the users. From the list of the wishes of drivers, what is the most frequent request in terms of interaction? Probably you mean something that will be uh, easier to use, especially the idea to that the car will adapt with you day by day as our interface on the desktop of the, our PCs or mobile phones. But uh, this time on a, on a car that interacts even with the physical environment, does the safety and the you know, uh, trouble-free use of any interface. So I will uh, will uh, launch the, the question to Abetic again about uh, the, you know, the ideal shape of the interface. <coughs> when a human-machine interface will be considered ideal for the users? Um, yes. Um... If once we were pushing for the technology and the cars used to have a lot of buttons, a lot of interface um, splashed over the dashboard, all over the surfaces you get inside, maybe after some time we noticed that this kind of approach is creating a stress for the driver and for the users because uh, when you drive you don't like this kind of, uh, this much of information and this much of controls you can have in the car. So basically our actual approach and maybe the future approach is to uh, make the life easier for the driver and for passengers to stress them less, uh, to ask them less information is needed to, to drive and uh, to give more freedom for all the rest they would do uh, in case they were not driving. So basically cars are uh, constantly improving the autonomy, they are more autonomous in uh, taking decisions. So many of uh, controls which driver was carrying once now, they are all automated. And uh, this gives us uh, the freedom to design the interface the, w the way we would like to have it, yeah. not the automatic way of, uh, which was once considered. But on the other hand, to just to continue the question, um, we, uh, we tried to listen to the buyer's opinion and buyer's needs but we also try to anticipate those needs because uh, if, if uh, 30 years ago someone would ask what's the future of the telephone, maybe people would speak about a different um, design of the, of the disc or different design yeah. for the wire, yeah. but nobody would say I would like uh, to have a telephone in my pocket because sometimes the, the user is not uh, conscious of opportunities you have uh, in the design project, so he's just um, looking to improve the product product he knows, while the designer or the engineer knows better where he can go beyond those expectations. So our goal, our approach is to anticipate the buyer's expectations and to create, uh, basically to create the need of new kind of products, uh, exactly in the way that the market drivers, driving uh, companies are doing today. Yeah. Very. Okay. So designers are the kind of specialists that are able to, to, to not to manipulate, but to change the habits and change the our use. Uh, that uh, is is really something that locks 
some of the customer requests to the shape that we know very well and belonging to the past. So going straight to the future me means also to revolution this kind of, uh, by, of um, attitude and also to innovate in terms of uh, simple but very important gesture. Mm -hmm. So we have another question from uh, from from the um, from the from the audience, uh, which are the first priority to to make the the electrical mobility such a, a, a global reality and a mass user reality. Uh, you know the Fiat Group has also anticipated since uh, 20 years this kind of uh, trend. So innovating and creating. Uh, one of the first uh, real zero emission vehicle in, 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 the, in the history of the prototypes, but most of them remain <laughs> prototypes, apart from uh, a certain highlights on a new kind of uh, uh, products, like even the 500 electric that is, uh, is running on the roads of America. There's a, a certain resistance in terms of adopting the electrical car, mostly for the cost. Cost is mostly due for, uh, for the batteries. And um, from my point, the idea, and also as a designer, the idea is to how to we can we can really create a plausible concept of electrical car where uh, we kind um, we could uh, uh, make a simpler use of the car itself, just creating uh, uh, such a commodity. What we call commodity is, uh, is something that brings in the hands of the customers uh, a very useful tool. Especially for uh, for the commuter, the daily commuter that goes from a house to, to home to work and back, how to recharge in a, in a in a in a compressed time the, the the batteries and how to recycle batteries. This is the main thing. So batteries are still very heavy and still very bulky in the package of a car, and the balance and the weight that they have with the global creature like a car is now is not positive. So there's a lot of, of uh, struggling in terms of inserting the batteries inside the package of a car. Uh, compressed air, we know there are some ideas around the world how to improve this, but uh, this is still to come as a, as a, general, as a general trend. And uh, so Lorenzo is, uh, is now approaching a very light cars project like uh, the 500s or uh, especially the the, the, the Fiat range of products where utility cars are our best uh, best products to offer to the customers. How we could manage, even for the interior cockpit design, the presence of uh, the accumulators and the batteries? Well, uh, in the state of art now, I think that accumulators will be, in fact, a major problem now because in the small car, <clears throat> we have a, a lot of uh, space that is utilized least for engine and um, fuel tanks and other parts. Maybe some of these parts could be um, reused for um, accumulators and electric engines. As on the 500 electric, where uh, As on, the, 500 on the front, on the back, we reached a, a perfect uh, uh, e um, equilibrium for... But, but I think that for designers, even a, a new problem is a new challenge, so every time we have a, a constraint that is, uh, is in, in some way uh, giving us problems, in really, really it gives it give us uh, opportunities, because where you uh, have a total freedom, there's also a problem in uh, creativity, because the designers always have a creativity when they have to solve problems. For us, in uh, electric engines are uh, something that is not totally new, but is uh, our uh, challenge for the future, obviously. Um, it's approaching a new architecture. Mostly, new architecture, no? because uh, when we know our architecture, we can uh, work very well. If we don't know it uh, very well, maybe we have uh, problems on, uh, on having the main, the, um, reaching the results. Hopefully, we could reach this uh, flat floor architecture, as we have seen oftenly in the auto shows with the concept car from the brands and from the companies, where an electric car is associated to something that uh, is called the easy entrance uh, concept with a great apertures, no reliefs on the, on the floor due for the mechanics, 
because uh, the first car I designed for Fiat was an electric one, was the Fiat Downtown, and the engines were in, inside the, the wheels. wheels. Yeah. And so this means that uh, electricity and accumulators can free off some of the space, uh, free up some of the space inside the cockpit. Okay, if, if I can add some words to words, I would say that uh, <coughs> so far all the examples of electric cars we've seen are based on the, their petrol uh, versions and expectations of a buyer uh, versus an electric car basically is the same. So they expect to have the same range, the same performance, the same comfort and space on board. But maybe we have to change also our expectations because uh, to drive an electric car would be a different, different drive from the petrol. Maybe the car doesn't have all that range, all that batteries inside, but it has only maybe half an hour of uh, range. After that, it can recharge very quickly. In that case, you have very small battery. So try to think larger, not take the a normal car and just put over all the expectations you would have in case of a petrol engine. Design a new mobility, which uses different infrastructures, Maybe there are chargers on every street light or every uh, um, 100 meters on the road. So the way the car moves is basically different in case of an electric sure. engine. Sure. So it's a great change of approach. Mm -hmm. And now we have another uh, session. Um, yeah, now the blogger could take uh, some action in the scene with the the questions, please, let's interact directly. Um, <clears throat> I want to ask, uh, um, will the future of uh, automotive design be more and more open source? Uh, we, we, we are uh, talking about uh, a contest uh, about sustainability uh, from the audience. Uh, and uh, some times ago, the, uh, there was the uh, Brazilian Fiat Mio project. Um, in it's uh, the future of uh, car design will be open source. Sure, some uh, of the technologies that are bringing the hands of uh, freelancers, designers like uh, you know the people that is really capable to uh, produce 3D files and also capable to interact with some of the information of the layout and the mechanics will be part in the. In this, um, in this scene where, uh, uh, apart from the industrial secret and sec security of data, some of the uh, things will be enlarged to the, to the larger population of designers and creative people. This is very important because the MIO was one of the, uh, the cases, like the, even the, 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 the very successful Fiat uh, 500 wants you uh, website where the, the, the audience was enlarged to a great discussion along the uh, designers and uh, passionate people that interacted with us. And so the MIO in Brazil has reported a large survey in terms of uh, analysis of the needs from the customers directly and brought to the hands of designers uh, some information very crucial to define a new product. Um, let's imagine when the population out there will be capable to design some proposal by themselves. This is a really challenging situation. And this is what uh, we are asking you now with the contest, being part of a real evolution, not being like uh, uh, side actors. And users. And users, of course. In, uh, in terms of design, uh, the new LED lights are uh, very important. Uh, you think this technology can be early introduced on uh, Fiat cars? Oh, when you mean LEDs, you are now uh, <coughs> talking about the most diffuse technology, especially for tail lamps. For headlamps, is coming to be something that is affecting the shape of the headlamps. And in a few years, all the products will be basically support the LEDs as a light source. For the tail lamps, the new trend, and especially for Fiat, the, the, the issue is not uh, to adopt the LEDs by themselves because the Alfa Romeo Giulietta is offering a huge collection of LEDs in sight. But for Fiat, the, um, the, 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 the trend will be to uh, create a very uniform and diffuse light for uh, tail lamps 
and still uh, to nowadays some of the models are using light guides so uh, acrylic material that diffuses the LED source to don't see the dots but to see homogeneous uh, homogenic lights uh, along the, the path for the headlamps this is a very interesting uh, question because uh, we are trying to substitute completely the module for uh, for the incandescent light to LEDs but this is not uh, anymore uh, a matter of, um, of uh, uh, decreasing the volume of the element because the LEDs needs uh, dissipators for heaters and needs electronics behind so the, the, the global uh, the, the wall volume for the headlamps would be the same for uh, for uh, at least five years Avetic have you something uh, because Avetic is also innovation team inside the the studio and is also uh, comparing some of the technologies with LEDs uh, for headlamps and tail lamps uh, uh, in our cars. Yes, um, one thing that I can mention is that Fiat is hardly based on the uh, human um, face, the face to put uh, on the car. So the, the eyes and the expressions are very important for us. We cannot permit to have a faceless or characterless car. So on one hand, it's right that uh, you are right that uh, the LED is very important, but on, on the other hand, these eyes, the typical view of Fiat cars, would maybe would come less uh, in case of uh, translation of the technology. So somehow, in our case, the form and uh, content are really connected, and it's very important not to run behind the, the last, uh, the latest fashion technology. I would like also there's a uh, there's a question about uh, uh, the enlargement of the users in the cars. So the autonomy program that is a, a program by Fiat Group to offer specialized car for disabled people, if uh, it will be an important part in the future design of Fiat, I really believe that uh, there shouldn't be any kind of uh, diversification of products for disabled people because we simply, as designers, we should go directly to inclusive form instead of exclusive. So how many times we say that a car is exclusive, it's only for you, for your pocket, your wallet, your money, but we don't approach the global car design in terms of enlargement of the users. And these other people are exactly the same users we are at the wheel of the car that when we can use hands and feet together. So it's very important to concentrate on new devices, especially for, for uh, the driving column where the drive-by-wire technology <coughs> will free the steering wheel and the brakes and the gas pedal to some of the mechanical interferences with the mechanic. So until this system by wire and not connected by mechanics will gain uh, a complete feasibility, I think there shouldn't be any, any motivation to use uh, pedals on cars. So as designers we should go directly to study this as a normal and standard feature for any car. As you, uh, what, what you say guys, are you agree to Perfectly agree. to free also the space for the, Adriana, we, we see that this car in terms of floor and carpet are mostly, are seen like uh, extension of the seat but not properly a floor. Really? When, uh, when I we try to put something of uh, innovative. Normally, we can, we try to put uh, the the last um, approach of, of the technology. But uh, the really innovative approach could be the the use of the car or, or the use of the material without stress. Yeah. You have a uh, user experience, and uh, you you can approach these. Uh, with this mind. Yeah, of course, and also freeing up some of the space that is now occupied by mechanism to have a completely horizontal floor mm -hmm. and also to, to enable some also uh, very interesting uh, um, flexible uh, interchange among seats and part of the dashboard of the IP. So there's another uh, message from you, how to face the challenge of permanent personal connectivity social media, work, and safe driving through design. This is a very interesting question and, and topic because we are now 
with the possibilities that a connected vehicle could gain. So surfing in the city and having a direct view with what is, uh, is the external environment is very important to assist the driver to don't be confused, to don't have overlapping in his or her concentration. So from one side we are calling, we are talking about uh, head up displays and uh, see through the windshield, or see through the windows inter interfaces, graphic interfaces and uh, uh, signalization and, uh, and especially uh, car navigators that are really interacting through the glass. But it's very important or through the, uh, through, through the Google in your, in your eyes. But on, on the other hand, we have to manage this uh, overlapping, this uh, loss of, of attention. And how the, the car will manage even the, the, the driving uh, opportunity to save your life and also to engage you in more opportunity. I think you are an expert on this uh, because you are, you are working on the next, next uh, radio system that is not actually a radio, it's much yes. more. Um, yes, for, for years we tried to keep away from the car all these uh, destructive technologies, but um, day by day we noticed that our users, um, they, they would like to have this connectivity also on board of the car because otherwise the, the time they, tra they, they travel in the car, they are excluded, they are um, not online, so they are not up to date on the events, on, uh, on their friends, the news and everything. So it becomes a hard point for future generation vehicles. And uh, we are trying to understand how we can uh, manage to have this kind of uh, very complex interactions inside the vehicle without distracting the driver. Which are the moments, which are the periods which, where he can de dedicate himself to these kind of activities and uh, maybe the car itself needs to become a bit more intelligent to, to take the control of the, the drive in uh, maybe highways or in uh, simpler uh, driving situations, leaving the driver the freedom to, to do something else. Uh, I, personally, I drove the Alfa Romeo 4C and I've been told that uh, more than half percent is uh, controlled by the computers. It looks to me like a very crude and very essential machine where engines really attach it to my commands, but there's a lot of electronics that interact from you and the car. So let's imagine in a few years that this will increase and we'll, we'll create such a self-assistance in a seamless with your, 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 your uh, volunty. Mm -hmm. So I think we, we lose the opportunity to, to watch at the seminar that was created for you to, to inspire your uh, to inspire your imagination because <coughs> you are really in a contest for a design theme that's uh, design is not only sketching and producing ideas and graphics like uh, like I'm doing now uh, with just sketching cars but uh, giving us uh, your ideas in terms of uh, projection into the future how the cars will be changed into this uh, dramatic and fast change of any kind of uh, reference in our modern world and uh, I have to, uh, yeah, there's a few questions again. Please, hey, please, guys. Um, we are talking about the car sustainability. Uh, how uh, Centro Stile Fiat worked in these uh, years uh, and work now to improve sustainability in car design and uh, with car design? Uh, could you make uh, an example of the case uh, study? Yeah, as an European, uh, OEM or you know, company or producer, so we are really uh, representing the top of the line in terms of, uh, of, uh, um, of CO2 emission uh, average and also our range of products is, is, uh, is positioned at the top of the, of the list of the, uh, the ecologists in, in, the, in, the, in the car industry and this is mostly due for some innovation like the, the, the twin air engine and also the um, uh, you know having on, on on our catalog some of the cars that are really brilliant in terms of uh, weight saving and be very light and very efficient in terms of emission. On the other hand, the design is part of, of the is part of this uh, uh, activity and trend because it produces uh, uh, integration. It produces also parts that in the same material and the same components are doing more more uh, functions inside the car. 
Let's imagine how an instrument panel was designed 10 years ago, and only in 10 years you see such a rationalization of parts and also all the weight saving in any components we, we mount on an IP or on a seat, for instance. So for this, uh, the design is an uh, integral part of, the, of this chain, uh, sometimes not visible from a, a not technical eye, a technical view, because this is very, it's very difficult to spot inside a component like an instrument panel or a dashboard. And but few people know that the Fiat is uh, at first place for uh, low, fuel, uh, low uh, CO2 emissions, and this is a, a reputation that Fiat deserves with a, with a long, long time research into light vehicles and especially how to make lighter the vehicles that are already small. Because we know regulation, especially for the next year, that will base on weight and emission uh, all the range of cars. And we know that uh, the most are weighty, the, the cars are, are, are heavy, the, the, the less difficult it is to reach the, the target. So, we are a producer, especially the Fiat brand is, uh, has on catalog a lot of uh, A segment and B segment cars, so it's very, for us, would be a challenge also to anticipate new trends and uh, respect the, the policy for the 2020 uh, new regulation. In terms of uh, personalization, uh, starts an uh, important cooperation with Mopar. Yes, of course, Mopar is, uh, is the brand of personalization. We call them accessories, but they are not actually accessories. They are, and this is a very interesting concept for your works on the contest. So Mopar for American people means uh, simply parts and personalization. So your dreams come true buying after the purchase of a car other parts. And this is very important also because it, this establishes a long-term relation from customer and company. So it's also a business where you, as designers, could be projected designing not only cool uh, cars and silhouettes and shapes, but also the parts that will complete the whole project. And uh, we were arguing before with Adriana how a car would, could be completed at the dealer shop and not uh, at the center of the factory. This is one of the the things that will uh, bring Mopar brand into uh, the larger business in our company, which is your idea. So how to complete the cars at the, at the time of your purchase. Adding parts and also changing colors oh. and, uh, and uh, dressing the car with different suits at the time you buy the car. When uh, you can... Uh rethink the car uh, about uh, not only with uh, accessor accessorizes but uh, with, the, with the, the, the start project the, the basic uh, car could be the, the basic version and you can could improve uh, with uh, w w w what we need and uh, it could be with, uh, with the Mopar accessories and uh, the, the other part uh, would be uh, projected. Yeah. Uh, there's a, such a, uh, you know, the, the center of gravity of our industry would be moved not only in the central factory or facility, but more into the value chain toward the customer at his or her place, why not, to dress up and finish the car. In 1999, we designed a uh, a very interesting concept that was called EcoBasic, where the parts were supplied by, by different uh, suppliers in the dealer shop. And so at the time of the purchase, you have to choose, uh, ch choose the color of the car. Uh, so there's a, there's, a, there's a question from you. When you're designing a car, which are the reasons why you consider that accessibility to rear seats is good enough? This is a good point because we started uh, talking about inclusive accessibility, blah, blah. And this is very important. I mean, th these things are affecting the shape of the car, of course, the height. Nobody is, is happy with a, a car that is sufficiently high over the head of the passenger. And we are looking at cars that are actually are very tight over the head because they are more sportive. But uh, once, one thing is the Alfa Romeo 4C, that is a car designed over your body and is like a glove for your hand something that fits perfectly your size 
and your drivability expectation. But when you, when you approach to a 500L and you consider this space like uh, we call this uh, hair like a female because the 500L is slightly female and uh, the cockpit space is 80% uh, of the footprint of the car on the ground and also the height of the body is, uh, is sufficient to get inside very comfortable. So if you customers and designers will accept to dimension the car to the real needs of the human figure to get in, to get out, to move the seats, to reconfigurate the seats, we will to the next phase, to the 2.0, 3.0 phase of the car design, where some shapes will be acceptable for the people. I was uh, crossed for, uh, for the Fiat Multiply in the 90s because the car was very odd, very different, but the car is still beating strong on the, on the street because the people buy the car second hand because it's, 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 uh, it's simply is useful. It's a different way to... It's a different way and uh, I, yeah, Avetik is a, is a guy that uh, has uh, great skills in architecture too. So he's, uh, he's uh, sharing architecture expertise and the car design expertise. I mean, let's, uh, let's see this guy and also how the, the, the fiats of the future will, uh, will change in this uh, kind of uh, observation, no? And for the rear seats, of course, it's a matter also of mechanism. How, how can we manage this? With the electrical one or mechanical? Well, um, basically, in our recent projects and those which are still coming, we try to give the sensation that the rear row of seats is even more rich than the front one because uh, you have more space, you have uh, different materials, different perceptions from the door panels and maybe the accessories you can get in front of you so it's not anymore the second class uh, of, of, the turn of the car but it's, it becomes a different class so it's different class. the premium class that is behind you are free to observe the, the panorama uh, outside window or to do uh, things that you are used to otherwise the driver and the front passengers are have their dashboards and they have different contents to manage yeah, there's a guy that uh, says that uh, uh, how much the weight to reduce will affect the design and keeping and removing all, all the all the stuff and bits that are not useful. Uh, the matter is not creating such a jeep wheelies of the future that the bare metal and the steering wheel with a, such a road metal road uh, in front of the steering wheel. The idea is to create a sensible and sensitive skin. Uh, I think the future of the cars will uh, regard not the number of parts that will compose the design, but more the approach that a sensitive skin will react to your commands and to your needs. This is very regarding the, the lightness, is regarding the uh, unification of parts, because removing parts means integrating. We know that plastic now could be uh, injected in two materials, once one more uh, rubber looking and one more rigid. So this is, is for instance, is, is, uh, is available right now. It's something that will avoid to have uh, an IP or a dashboard split in two or three parts, but having one piece. And uh, probably technology is, uh, is going very, very far from this. And the matter is how, even for the customer point of view, we can accept these things on the cars. Why the people is buying new furniture for their houses and homes and don't buy such a, the, the, that innovative cars? Because this is a trend that is not, has never compared uh, from the two landscapes, the living and uh, what they say, the automotive. Why design of the living is so evolved and the automotive, from the customer point of view, is so strictly uh, anchored to this uh, primitive primitive uh, concepts. But of course we are working a lot on, uh, on uh, making the cars lighter, a lot. And any screw, any uh, small uh, elements for a fixing point, etc., is revised by these guys, not from the engineering team, but these guys in terms of analysis of what uh, is, uh, is necessary and what is not. Thank you very much and uh, really, really, really uh, appreciate to your participation. We we had no possibility to to answer to all the questions you submitted. So I'm very appreciate with the team and and uh, take care. Bye.
Thank you.